today I'm bringing you a base designed by myself alone and we're gonna see how it defends the meta super witches so let's dive in and see this base all right here we are and this is the layout you are going to be shocked like what the hell is even this and that's basically when everyone see the base that's when they will think you know every single attack nearly the attacker actually goes to the 3 2 1 counter in Legends League. So they are thinking too much of what should they do. You can see already this is the same. And this attacker, I think he went to choose the Monolith side. And I have other examples of every single fireball angle. So you're gonna see how things work. This fireball angle, the only problem with it is that, of course, we have the enemy king. So they need to use the headhunter. They need to use a droid with their king sometimes, or maybe not. He got a bit good headhunter drop, but now he's going with the log launcher to finish that town hall off because otherwise the witches will not be able to reach it. He needs to jump in a weird way to get it, and it will just be a bit messy. So he's going to use a log launcher and king and queen on the sides. You can see we have an expo and the ricochet cannon. These two, I designed it there to place the warden walk in front there's three skeleton trap in front of this ricochet cannon and on the new edit is actually three it was two you know this is legend league you always have to switch up and change your traps depending on how people attack it we have the jump spell for the king and this is where the double rocket loon clan castle comes out with the double ice golem this clan castle is so good because sometimes you will force the you know people to drop the poison spell a lot earlier but still we have the single infernal lock on and the single infernals on this base are one of the key things to defend you're gonna see one of the attacks that goes to high percentages actually because of a single inferno that it will defend so queen ability on the outside goes off single inferno locks to one of the super witches we got the ricochet cannon waiting for that queen and now you can see how everything got divided and separated and a bit more messy right and we now have an invisibility tower to protect this entire back end and you can see because there's a lot of buildings on the sides, I've never actually seen someone walk on the side with the warden because we've got three storages. So if you want to change up and switch up a few things, you can place this elixir storage a bit more in front of the town hall. So the warden has a lot of more issues, but still you're going to see this full entire tesla farm how i placed it right there is basically for the warden walk with the queen and the rc no one will ever dare to drop their warden in front of the enemy queen and the enemy rc because it's just not gonna happen and a lot of the people in legends league they got two invisibility spells to you know of course do you their warden walk in this case, we have three defenses. As you can see, we had two mortar on the sides and we had a cannon in the middle, which means they cannot go with that, you know, quick fireball ability. They need to go ahead and do a warden walk, which is why we have the Teslas, enemy queen, of course, the RC. And you can see this attack is going to end like this because guys, I mean, I'm in very high legends, I would say, because I'm above 6k trophies and getting to 6k trophies is a hassle. And trust me, when your base defends around two or three times even in this trophy range, that's insane, especially if it's your own design. Okay, we are here on the next attack. We got another super witch approach. This guy has a bit lower fireball. That's why he has two earthquake spell. And in lower legends guys or even in mid legends you will see these type of players but again this person cannot pull up a good plan in those 30 seconds on the base because the way the style i designed is so new like this i've never seen such a base myself you know but obviously it's just wonderful to be able to catch these players plan the entire 30 seconds because it means the base is doing something good at least with the planning side it's weird you know and that's why i have double of course of those you know traps in case people want to drop a baby dragon on the ricochet cannon even with the test loan we got two of those um traps queen and pecos on this side because this is a heavy side and he needed it to go down but this guy does an interesting approach with the fireball because the way he drops this Siege Barracks and Queen, I thought he's gonna funnel this and then funnel that and then go into the middle. But no, I think if I'm not mistaken, because I watched the replay, I think it was yesterday. This guy goes in with a very side warden for this, but the clan castle comes out because of course it targets the outer trash buildings. And it's a good way to pull this CC. Now look at this. 
He drops a warden here to go in and get that entire area down. So this warden fireball works, but look at the time. This guy already spent 1 minute and 10 seconds in this warden walk and now he's gonna kind of try to pull the warden but of course it's not gonna be able to. We got the single infernal locking to the king. He does have a freeze which is gonna go down and look at the queen area. This is where the rage tower comes in handy because this rage in the core allows you to put so much damage that if for example the army is separated or the funnel is bad you will see the amount of damage this area does with the monolith because the queen is also going around and we're going to be able to completely crush that entire side of his troops and now the top side remains which the ricochet cannon did do quite well in damage going in with the rage on the droids on the top side warden is going to end up dying here so he won't be able to get the town hall and this area is where i would tell you to change a few things but don't worry i'm actually gonna change it for you in the link down below because i've never seen anyone drop a warden on the top side so what i did is put three skeleton on this ricochet cannon on the right and put one skeleton with a few small bombs on the town hall and monolith area for exactly this type of recoveries sending the rc alone and popping early ability this will allow those hogs to die so quickly and allow the rc to be wasted on the enemy king for example or before the town hall and making this attack basically a one star even though you know let's not go ahead too far they had a wall breaker in their army they could wall break the monolith and they could kind of do something like wall breaker here maybe he tried to jump as well but still the troops are going around but you know it's never too bad to put a skeleton trap on your town hall as i said i've not seen anyone do these type of approaches on the top side so i'm gonna change it in the link below for yourself okay here we are on another attack and it's not super witches but it is fireball so i wanted to show you like okay there is different approaches and also there's different style of attacks you know of course so i wanted to see and like kind of realize how are these people doing this rocket loon nine healer fireball this is i believe the itsu's army like he used it way back and he was doing it in cwls and stuff but still this is why no one will go for this approach and if they do they will time fail yeah i just spoiled it for you this guy ended up time failing because even with the jelly on the warden, there is multiple defenses on this side. There are storages, there is big defenses like the wizard tower and the cannon which take down like which actually cost a lot of other stuff to go down. There are sweepers and a lot of defenses in general. So this guy is going to invest a few extra seconds on this entire area and now he's going to go with that beautiful fireball on this side of the base. His jelly I think is actually run out now so the warden will have to be on this area for a bit. Let me zoom out because he's gonna invest the queen and the king I think in another area if I'm not mistaken. But that's just how the strategy goes. He wants the warden to get the town hall because what, what else is gonna get that town hall for him? You know that's just the way the strategy works I think you know in a lot of them actually. Unless you have that warden fireball with the um, what do you call that the giant arrow yes. That's when you can actually get the town hall nicely with the you know combination of those two but now once the tunnel is secured he lost around 1 minute 15 seconds on this base and again he has the queen on the side is he gonna drop the king with the warden itself i'm not actually sure but still this base has three single infernos and he only has three freeze which means he needs to be precise and only freeze for those single infernos otherwise he's gonna lose some abilities while we're here for the ricochet cannon so king is gonna actually come with the queen to take this entire area down but you know the damage is dealt enough to the king especially with the eagle also so the king already got like two buildings and he's on red hp so that's just crazy still he hasn't pulled the cc and it was interesting because this guy didn't really wanted to take down the cc he has a poison as well so he wasn't greedy which is good Warden on the lower side doing itself and doing amazing and you can see the traps on the top side again. He tried to drop so many rocket loons on that ricochet cannon which didn't end up working and there is a builder so he's gonna end up repairing it and just watch the single infernos with the combination of the ice golems. This is insane but he was lucky a single lock to the healer because if he was on the queen, the queen would have been kind of gone through ability by now 
or C to the core and this is where on the new edit I do have the tornado trap in between here but I removed it because it's not good to have a tornado trap in your invisibility tower area but look at his time he invested so much time at the beginning on that warden walk and making sure the warden goes for the town hall that he's gonna be low on time and these bases are basically like kind of like that because you got a lot of those extra like buildings on the sides which you need to make sure okay hold on maybe troops will go to the outside or maybe they will come back to the inside but you need to watch them it's a big risk to leave them and have the town hall by itself you know so the time field is also one of the key things in defenses in legends league and especially in tournaments where builders actually build to kind of cost time from the enemy and this base actually does quite well in that area too all right let's see this now i watched this kind of in my defensive log and i was like hold on it's a root rider why not let me just bring it and you can see so he pulls a few of those skeleton trap and valkyries to defend it and kind of not defend it sorry take it down and he had a pekka to clear that area but again this area entirely is just insane amount of damage with the x1 the ricochet cannon He's gonna go in with the full spam on the lower side with the droids and he has the warden. What is his equipments? Okay, I think they are regular equipments and the king, okay, the king was actually quite interesting. But still, everyone does that with their overgrowth. Everyone on the rage tower. I don't know why, I don't know. Don't ask me, I have no clue in a root rider strategy. Maybe you can know yourself, but still. He has the king on the town hall, which is gonna be able to take it down. Going with the warden ability, root rider split is actually not too bad for him because if these two defenses stay on the right side, they're gonna be tough for the RC drop. So the overgrowth goes off. Is he gonna overgrowth again? Nice, he waits for the rage tower and then goes with the overgrowth. And you can see already this entire top area is so toxic guys it's not easy to get through trust me and especially in low legends so many people don't know how to deal with these areas or even in mid legends so if your trophies are a bit low or even a bit middle like around let's say 5700 5800 600 these are the trophies that if you run this pace you're gonna get surprised i think by the way it defends i just i wouldn't kind of um, run it in very high legends if you are like top 100 and if you're like 6k above because it's already kind of been seen of course i'm testing it and i was running the base i think two days ago so you know i'm not waiting for the base to be super old and bring it for you guys this base i'm gonna bring it to blueprint channel and of course my own channel i think a few days later but i wanted to bring it because it worked really good so why not and look at this Everything died, all the Root Riders, and there's only those heroes alive. I don't know how the king's still alive because he went to the town hall and monolith area. But of course, with that equipment, the mustache is crazy. But still, we're gonna be able to get this defense as well from a Root Rider approach. And hopefully you guys got convinced that I could actually build a base which can defend. But it was a weird base. It's a very weird looking base. I know that, I understand that, I have other designs actually with the box base with the diamond base i think i have like four more bases i designed this season and all of them i run it until now and i'm on 6k trophies so i'm experiencing a bit more with the base building area in the you know home village but yeah i'm liking it i'm honestly liking it but still the link will be down below in the description and let me know what else you would change about this base in the comments and we'll see you soon in the next video take care peace